I think that, you know what, I think that night, man, that Biggie and Tupac is the worst ever, dog. That's the biggest stain on the eye of hip hop, dog, I think. Is that just whole thing was crazy because it all could all been avoided. Yeah, it definitely could have been avoided, man. It could have been, it, all it took was, was probably a phone call. I wish we had cell phones back then because if, I felt like if they would have had a conversation, mm -hmm. that should have been, you know, over with. Pac was already done with it. Like, after hit him up, he was kind of already done with it. You know what I'm saying? He, he was, he was on, like, I said what I needed to say. I'm, I'm off that. Mm -hmm. So, since his departure, man, have you ever felt like, um, because I told you when you came on, I ain't going to ask you no whole bunch. Of, this whole interview ain't going to be about Tupac. You're a pretty intelligent brother. You're well-versed in a lot of things. Has it ever been a point where you wanted to tell somebody interviewing you, man, are you here to talk to me or you want to just ask me? Oh, no, I had to do that before. I've had to do that. How many times? I don't remember how many times, but more than once for sure. You're doing it right now, God damn it. No, he ain't doing it because I ain't talking to this brother all night about no Tupac. I ain't doing it, but... It's one of those things, if you in the studio, you got to ask certain questions. Yeah. Because you go have a fan, fan base of people, because we don't do this for us, we do this for the people out there. Why you didn't ask them this? You had them up there and you, didn't, you just talked about this. But one of the things I want to know is, and this is a serious question, right? If you had a chance to do this all over again with all the trials and bullshit, would you do it, would you do it any different? Nope. Would you change up? Your life no, you man, can't. you can't, man, because nah. that would get you to the point of where you at right now. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. you know, you see all these, you know, you see movies where they f with time and time You're travel, always going, up, going up, you back change up in something. the past, and every time something changes, it f***s up your future. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, why would you change anything? Whether it was good or bad, it was meant to happen so you could become who you are today, mm -hmm. you get me? And if you go back and change some of that, you, you could be up the anywhere. You could be anywhere you might today. Not have kids. You could be. You might not even be here. You might feel not me? Be here. You f around, go back and change something, and nigga, you're not here today. You feel <laughs> me? <laughs> Real <laughs> you don't delete it yourself <laughs> out the Matrix because you want to go yeah. back and change something. Man, it happened. Mm -hmm. the past be rewritten it should stand for something as a lesson to mother and for those who have made it through situations because mm -hmm. it could have easily been a different situation no i was about to say because that night Pac was supposed to ride with us exactly and at the last minute he decided to ride with Suge. you know what i mean so everything happened for a reason once you look back on it you'd be like yeah that was supposed to happen the way it happened for a reason mm -hmm. you know what i mean period because he could have been in the car with us. And, yeah, you know what I'm saying? He could have got he, shot. Exactly. Anything, it, you know, you can't change. You, you want to because you feel that maybe if I change something, it would turn out better. But how do you know your life would change better if you change something that you went through 30 years ago, 15 years ago? It was meant to happen. And not to say that in, in, in a f***ed up way, but it was written. You mm -hmm. get me? People don't believe a lot of that, but your life is already written. Oh, yeah, I believe that, too. I believe that this is, we living in, um, some people under the belief that we in a simulation, that this stuff is already pre-planned, and it's like, you, you feel what I'm saying? We've all been in a up situation yeah. to where we could have been shot or killed mm -hmm. or whatever. I mean, I used to gangbang, hang on the corner. Niggas drive by shoot. I was gonna say that wasn't the first shootout or being. You shot feel at. me, nigga? That's you know what I mean? that's, that was, that's just a situation that happened. Well, the rap game is treacherous, though. The, <laughs> the rap game out here living. The, rap, living the rap game, nigga. Life is treacherous. Yeah, I was about to say. You there you go. Navigate. Life is treacherous, man. Yeah. And because ain't no shootouts young, ever happen in the studio. Young, as young men, <laughs> all, all that happened outside mm -hmm. in the streets. We all made decisions that. We could either be here or not be here right now. You mm -hmm. get me? And because of those decisions we made, it probably fucked us up a little bit, but it still put us in the position to where we're able to be here right now. It's a lot of niggas who walk the same motherfucking streets we did. Mm -hmm. Niggas ain't here right mm -hmm. now. That's real. It was unfortunate. You get me? Mm -hmm. My nigga, nigga, I, nigga, I walked this same motherfucking shit an hour ago. 
and the homie came down here, nigga, and they took him out. Just just an hour after I just walked to the same liquor store. Nigga, I just used this same sh I just drove this same car. You feel me? Nigga, the homie got in the car, nigga, hit the corner, nigga, and they towed this motherfucker up. Situations happen, and it, it was it was, we was put there because of that. Yeah. So you can't change those walks you had, man. Uh, you can't. Yeah. You, you you want you think it could be better, you know, man. If I could have went back and I could have told my nigga, man, don't ride in that car, ride with us. Who's to say the niggas wouldn't have pulled up on that car? Mm -hmm. We know who we looking for. Yeah, for real, real talk. So you got a podcast now. I did, I did, man. But it's funny, like, cause we was talking about the podcast and the, and, the, and the need for attention and shit. So mm -hmm. I kind of put mine on pause, man, because I I realized that you know it was more about you know who 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 you gonna talk about this week. Mm -hmm. They either wanted me to just talk about Pac all day mm. or talk about other bullshit that I ain't on. You know, a lot of my interviews, a lot of my interviews was about. You know, people's life story. I like to sit down and chop it up and, and, and hear your story about what got you from point A to point B to where you at now. Exactly. And, and that's what a lot of my shit was about. And it was cool. I did some great interviews. I interviewed everybody from Zab, Judah. I interviewed Vlad. You know, I interviewed Too Short. I interviewed a lot of great people, and it was a lot of good content that's still out there. But I didn't feel like um, I wanted to contribute anything more to what's out there until I figure out how to make myself stand out from what everybody else is doing. Mm. And if I ain't got nothing to offer that's different, then I'm gonna let other people have it. Yeah, it is because in this game, man, you have to change your format up, especially if you like the forefather of it. I like to believe that we the first ones to put the stuff that we kind of do in the podcast format. You know, mm -hmm. not going out doing hood vlogs and nothing like that, but just really cats sitting at the table talking mm -hmm. about grown man stuff. Not necessarily about negative stuff, but just stuff that's real, life and death. Period. You feel me? So once a lot of people saw that and they thought that's all it was to it, a lot of people ran that format. So we don't flip the format right. a couple of times in a couple of different ways because you have to always offer something that's unique. It's not like when I talk to somebody and I say, well, what's your podcast going to be about? Or we just go do like such and such and talk to rappers. And I say, oh, man, that's an original idea. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's unique. You can do very well with that. Yeah. Because it's somebody that already got a head start on you yeah. with that already. And they already became an expert in that field. So, man, what, what's, some, what's next on the horizon for you? Man, still doing music. I got my brother Bone here. We got a project we're going to drop in, 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 in a hot second. Um, we just, as the Outlaws, we just put a, a, a greatest a greatest collabs compilation out, man. We dropping three albums in three days. We just put the first one out today. The second one going to come out tomorrow. And the third one going to come out Friday. And it's all our collaborations that we did, you know, over the past few years. And so shout that's out, about. Shout out to homie Noble. Yeah, yeah. 100%. Shout out to my brother Noble. And so we got some classic records, man. We got some classic records with Hussein Fatal, who's no longer with us. You rest know, um, rest in peace. I, I got I, I got a, a, a last song with Fatal. You sure do. Yes, indeed. That record so motherfucking hard. Yes, indeed. Mm -hmm. He got some classics out there. Yeah, yeah. You know, eight inspired us. It's inspired everything we did coming up in this You know what I mean? Tupac included. So, you know. That's one of the reasons why I'm sitting here right now, because I had said I'm not doing no more interviews for a minute. Mm -hmm. you know. But when the homie Doughboy was like, man, hey, once you on the show, I was like, man, I got to do eight. Oh, yeah, definitely. I told yeah. you, they, they, they don't believe it. I tell it's them, certain man, people. It's certain people, like, you know, you have respect for. Um, Edie and Noble, um, I don't give a f I can call them up. Man, I need a verse or whatever, whatever, and always with no problem, just vice versa, too, man, so. Certain cats, like I said, in this industry, I have grown to have a a, a great respect for. Yeah, mm -hmm. Primo, uh, uh, Face, mm -hmm. uh, Edie Noble, certain cats, Spice, mm -hmm. you know. It's it's more than just, you know, records and just, you know, it's it's real rapport and real friendship. Real and friendships like and that. relationships, so man. That's what Trump it is, everything. Man. Nah, 100%. That Trump everything. Now, yeah. was you cool? Was like I said, Psych was my road, dog. Yeah. Like, me and Big Psych, I, I, I was just had this conversation with Eight today. Is like, you can't call everybody your friend. 
Some people just your homies. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, everybody your friend. Psych was my friend. Mm -hmm. Like, like we have formed a really good friendship. And I know you being as young as you were, y'all had a big age difference. Was you cool with him? Absolutely. Yeah. Psych was a funny dude, wasn't yeah. he? Psych was a funny dude. I learned a lot about living in Los Angeles from Psych. <laughs> I learned Psych a lot about L.A. LA from Psych. Yeah, Psych. You know, Psych. Psych was a yeah. gangster. You know, yeah, he was a gangster. So. Yeah, me and Psych used to just ride, ride around L.A. and he would just point out different neighborhoods and you know, like okay, this is this is this is, you know, uh, this over here, this is this hood over here, this boom boom boom. But he just showed me a lot about how to navigate out here because we was East Coast kids coming to L.A. and we, you know, we was a. Uh, we was looking at LA from like from the TV aspect. So when we first came out here, first thing we wanted to do was go to Crenshaw. We would go to, <laughs> we was like, where's Crenshaw at? I heard so much about Crenshaw. Let's go to Crenshaw. Where's Compton at? Let's go to Compton and shit. And Psych heard that. Psych was like, man, Pac, these niggas was in Compton the other day, man. We, I, we got, Pac was like, look, sit them down, holler at them, let them know where they at, where to go, where not to go. And, and, and Psych was 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 that for us. He put you with the right dude because Psych was a fool, but he had sense though. Yeah, mm. like Psych had a lot of wisdom because he would kill me sometimes. Big Stiller, what you doing, man? You know how Psych talked in three D, mm -hmm. kind of like you know. But he would call me and tell me, man, you got to tone your temper down, man. You can't be in there tearing up them people. You know, cause you know, the the laws gonna come down on your ass. You know how Psych talked, man, and uh. He was a real cool dude, man. I just feel like it was a real pleasure to, to know him because, I, man, I'm not going to lie. When Psych died, it was two cats who died, man. It was my friends. When a friend died, it was a dude, my boy Big Bruce from Compton. Mm. When he died, I was sick for like a whole year. And when Psych died, I was sick for a whole year because I'm going to tell you what happened with Psych. When he died, I just started getting into podcasting. I was early on this stuff, right? And... um. I had it set up to where I was gonna do an interview with him. We was doing stuff up at um, Dash at the time. Mm -hmm. This is when early on, you know? I said, I'm gonna start doing this stuff. And um, I was supposed to meet him. And I changed my mind because I had to coach. I decided I was gonna have practice. We played the Ducks that week or something like that. It was something going on. And I told Psych, hey man, let's just do it tomorrow. Or do it another, you know, next week. Man, sure, I'm glad you called me. I ain't wanna roll down the freeway. He was like, I don't, cause you know he lived out in the, IE at that time. Mm -hmm. He was like, I didn't want to come on that thing. I was on my way, so good looking. I said, yeah, my nigga, I hit you up later on. So when you got a friend, dog, you go talk to them at least once a day or every other day. You know, if it go two days and you ain't heard from him, man, that's kind of weird. Unless he out the country or something like that, they got something going on. But I hadn't heard from him. We was trying to hook that thing up. And I called him his phone. First was his ring. Then it started he's going straight to voicemail. Then his voicemail full. And I was like, man, where is Big Psych at? I ain't heard from him, you know? And Forty Glock had told me he had died. Mm. Forty Glock was like, man, Psych dead. I said, like, and it shocked me. I was like, how? Mm -hmm. Like, I knew, I, do, I knew didn't nobody do nothing to Big Psych. I, I, knew, he, I knew he wasn't um, murdered or nothing like that because Psych was a dude that was loved by everybody pretty much, right? But when they told me he had a heart attack, that shit just fucked me up, man. Another dude to go to the gym all the time. And he was by himself too, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And that was, that was unfortunate, you know, the, the way it happened. You know what I'm saying? Psych was a cowboy though. We used to call him a cowboy. Psych used to smoke the camels without the filter. Oh yeah. So, you know, all his little homies used yeah, to call that nigga right a cowboy. <laughs> That's the jail right there, nigga. Mm -hmm. You were smoking camels without the nigga. You yeah, I'm gonna tell you with, something funny about Psych. Straight from the yard, nigga. We went to Dubai and Psych had smuggled some cigarettes in there. Oh yeah, and I, cause I, that was my big thing. I told all, cause I didn't smoke weed. I said, man, if any of y'all get caught with weed, do not say that y'all with me. <laughs> Don't, if y'all bringing over dumb shit, I'm telling y'all now, y'all on y'all own. Something happened, psych, cause you know you ain't supposed to have nothing over there. Hell you ain't supposed no. to bring nothing there. Psych in this room, I said, and had a wet tile or something by the thing, and I said, man, what is you doing, man? Nigga, like nigga, I'm smoking. <laughs> Straight a like smoke, that. A smoker gonna have to smoke, nigga. Yeah, I don't yeah, give a yeah. f talk. Mm -hmm. Nigga, Psych I got to smoke. smoke, nigga. F that. For sure. Yeah, man. Shout out to all them brothers, man. I appreciate you coming to sit down with us, man. man I appreciate y'all having us, man. man. You know, I'm glad, man. man that you, you know, I'm glad we had the pleasure. Because I don't like to call these interviews. You know, I don't think you living here feel like you've been interviewed. Nah, we don't like to. Nah, this is a convo. Yeah, yeah that's what we've been saying. We talked about a bunch of shit, man. And we talked about that needed to be spoke about. 
Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? From yeah. health to, you know, police brutality. Definitely. Then we got to, you know, my history and Pac and all of that. You know what I mean? And so we try to, it's a combo. We try to let niggas just – we just talk to niggas, man. Mm-hmm. You know. Like I said, man, I'm sure, man, you don't been – because I look at some of this stuff and, you know, don't get me wrong. I think all of us in this room have a certain level of fandom of hip-hop. Or that's what we wouldn't be doing what we're doing ultimately. you a fan of it, right? I would love to have a conversation with Chuck D and just different people, you know, but. That would be a great combo, too. I don't have a chance to not interview Chuck, but just have a conversation. Yeah, and that's Chuck. what I want to just know his thought on, you know, certain things that's going on. But I think that's what it should be about. You just can't, and I think it's borderline disrespectful to get an individual in the room to just talk about a whole nother human being. Right. It's like you kind of being dismissive of this person that's sitting in front of you. Mm-hmm. You feel what I'm saying? It's natural to have some questions, but they're not no questions that everybody already know the answers to. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Man, I appreciate you coming by, big dog. I appreciate y'all having me. Man, for you. sure. Whenever you Absolutely. need us, man, we here. All day, man. You know what it yeah. is. Jim. Yeah. We we'll check in with y'all next week. We out of here. Jim. Yeah. If I lie, my nose will grow like Pinocchio. We gon' tell you the truth and nothing but the truth. Oh. Gangsta